I am the resurrection and I am the life. He who believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His compassion never fails. Every morning they are renewed. Jesus said, Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. I am sure that neither death nor life nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. If we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and lived again, that he may be Lord both of the dead and of the living. We brought nothing into the world, 
and we take nothing out. The Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The eternal God is our refuge and underneath are the everlasting arms. Please sit. We will now have the tributes, first by Amanda Fields, and we follow on with the tributes after Amanda Fields.
so I can Brittany sing. A poem entitled, A Gem Gone Too Soon, written by Brittany Singh. A special gem she was, her smile as bright as the sunshine, and her heart as solid as gold. For she loved so many, as she was a wife, mother, and grandmother to many. Her eyes were as soft and loving as a garden full of roses. Her laughter was as gentle and warm, that melted our hearts even more. Her life was full of loving deeds, always putting others first instead of her own needs. Grandma was a woman of class and honor. She was hardworking and loved her family unconditionally, for they made her proud. Grandma, your time on earth ended that day, for God wanted a special gem to keep in his garden to stay. We left behind sweet memories that will live on in our hearts forever. Remembering her would be easy, but she left behind aches in our hearts that will last forever. Your life was a rainbow of which I would love to write about more. But as my broken heart feels heavy, I'm sorry I can't anymore. I love you with a special love that was deep on the first day I met you. Your warm hugs I will miss, and kissing you just to hear you giggle, and troubling you just to see you smile. Thank you, Grandma, for all the tears and laughter we have shared together. Grandma has gone to her eternal home to rest, for now she is finally reunited with the love of her life, Granddad holding hands side by side. A tribute for our Sister Sheila Cook. Sister Sheila Cook joined the congregation at Faith in its very early days when it was known as the St. Philip Moravian Fellowship and met at the Princess Margaret Secondary School. Though a quiet lady, she was actively involved in the life of the congregation being present most Sundays, she loved harvest. When harvest time came around for our congregation, she would journey around her communities of St. Philip and St. John, collecting produce and other gifts for this occasion. She would then collaborate with another member to get them in readiness for the big day. Of course, she was always present to hear and share in the Harvest program. Sister Sheila was both friendly and generous. She had to pass the home of another member on her way to church, and so she concluded that there was no point to both of them driving to church in separate vehicles. She therefore started transporting the other member. When she was no longer driving, 
The other member, in turn, volunteered to go for Sister Sheila. But often, she would meet Sister Sheila already on the road to meet her. Such was her willingness to cooperate and serve. Sister Sheila loved to sing, although she never sang on the church's seasonal choir. Yet her voice could regularly be heard standing out in the congregation's singing. And this was often alto. In fact, even during her days, when she became homebound, she was seen lustily as we visited with her. Of course, this was often accompanied by dancing. We can still see her head, hands and feet dancing to the music, whether it was hymns or dinner music on the annual Girls' Day Out by the Women's Fellowship. Reports are that she moved along the floor to the music of Q in the community in her early days at the senior citizen's home. Sheila joined in outings at church, whether it was a picnic or a bus tour. The girls there out are outdoor worship. She was always jovial and she loved her Lord. One of the hymns which she would lustily sing is Blessed Assurance. And we are glad that this is among her home-going hymns today. She sings with the angels now. Whilst we are unable to sing for her today, I share the hymn we dedicate in her honor. When all my labors and trials are o'er, and I am safe on that beautiful shore. Just to be near the dear Lord I adore, will I to the ages be glory for me. When by the gift of this infinite grace, I am accorded in heaven a place, just to be there and to look on his face, will through the ages be glory for me. Friends will be there, I have loved long ago. Joy like a river around me will flow. Yet just a smile from my Savior I know will through the ages be glory for me. Oh, that will be glory for me. Glory for me, glory for me. When by his grace, I shall look on his face, that will be glory, the glory for me. Her Excellency, the Most Honorable Dame Sandra Prunella Mason, President of Barbados, Honorable Chief Justice Sir Patterson Cheltenham, Former Chief Justice Sir Marston Gibson, Sir Keith Hunt, Sir Trevor Carmichael, Senator Dr. Christopher Maynard, Justice of Appeal, Madam Justice Margaret Ripa, Justice of the High Court, Justice Randall Worrell, Madam Justice Jacqueline Cornelius, Madam Justice Michelle Weeks, Justice Cecil McCarthy, Madam Justice Cicely Chase, Justice Christopher Birch, Justice Barry Carrington, 
Adjunct Justice of the High Court, Madam Justice Lauriane Smith Pabell. Good evening, church. It's a Thanksgiving ceremony, so I want you to just enjoy everything for mom. She was really a live character. I would love you to have met her in her heyday, and Lauriane is laughing and saying, yes, it's true. As we gather to say goodbye to our mother, our aunt, our grandmother, and a friend, I want to reflect on my mom's regular words of inspiration. Take it to God in prayer. Let it go and let God work on it. When she prayed for her, she said, I pray the blood of Jesus upon you from the top of your head to the sole of your feet. This was a mantra of Sheila Yvonne Cook near Prescott, centered in God to the end. As I reflected on my mom's life, on motherhood, on my motherhood and general motherhood, I realized that mothers have so many different aspects and facets of their life. I'm not saying that men don't as well, so today I'm just speaking on mothers, but there are men who do both roles, so I'm not going to be gender biased at all in that regard. But today I'm reflecting on motherhood. She's a caretaker, our nurturer, a defender, protector, our doctor, our nurse, our pharmacist, our counselor, our provider, financer, our adjudicator, mediator, and I could go on. These qualifications require for this job in today's world, many degrees. Degrees in medicine, in nursing, psychology, mediation, law. But our mothers without those qualifications have worked to make their children succeed. They invest in us like a farmer, hoping that the weather would not affect us. We will weather it and become even stronger. My mother was all of this to us and more. Sheila was the fifth of eight children born to Beatrice and Charles Prescott in Church Villa St. Philip. She became an orphan at the age of 11 years old. As a result, she left St. Philip to reside with her uncle, Beresford Belgrave, in Hinesbury Road, a Belgrave funeral home. In her household where she resided, his wife embraced her and her sisters, Clotilda, Audina, Merlin, along with the cousins, Roy, Elaine, Marjorie, and Joan. Our family in Trinidad requested that her sister, Jean, reside with them. Her brothers, Louis, Alfred, and Winston were over 18 years old, and as such did not need to be under the guidance of anyone, and they remain in St. Philip. During her teenage years, she possessed a passion for nurturing and caring. She became a mother to her younger siblings. It was no surprise of her nurturing characteristic that she chose the profession of nursing. Her first assignment was at the St. John District Hospital. One of her duties took her into the community, and this is where she met the love of her life, Horatia Sun Cook. Their love was so strong, I was able to convert her to being a DLP for the rest of her life. I think that is some kind of love. <laughs> My parents were a dynamic couple with personalities that were very much alike. They were full of joy and laughter, the life of the party, and they both had big hearts for the community. They were married on September 3rd, 1966, and that marriage produced two children, my brother Paul and myself. Union also gave us sisters, Monica and Elise, my father's nieces resided with us. Mom had a genuine love for people. She treated us equally. No one could tell that my cousins were not my sisters. In our household, we had chores to do equally, and that including farming. Yes, imagine me farming. Yes, <laughs> right, Laurie? And we had to attend Sunday school together. I believe her sojourn in Belgrave household cemented that love of family. She was a disciplinarian. My siblings were equally punished. And as I said, my siblings and not I were equally punished when they misbehave. We were respectful and mannerly as she was a firm believer in sparing the rod was Paul the child. This she echoed in their ears each time that they were being punished. I wonder why I'm saying they're not them. It is said, for my first beating, I created a device that just stopped from beating me ever again. I formed that in the mouth and it frightened her and she never hit me again. So. I got other punishments. I'm not sure if that was better than getting beat. It might last longer, but <laughs> the tactic did work. It did work. Mommy did not only care for Monica and Elise, but for all the young Bills in the Cook family, such as Ronnie. She paid the school fees, and he's really succeeded in life, and I think it contributed to her doing that as well. In vision parlance, she sent him to school. My brother, Joel, lived with us for a while before migrating to the USA. My mom had a million dollar smile that made everyone meeting her feel comfortable. She carried this characteristic to her second nursing assignment at St. John's Children's Home. 
children resided there, and rather my siblings and I, they came by our house, we went back to visit them, and they loved her and appreciated her and called her Auntie Sheila. Many of them remained in contact with her after she had left and after they had left the children's home, and some are here today. Our home became a central place for children in the neighborhood. She was an unusual Bajan. If you come by Bajan, wasn't invited and not gonna let you in, they might hide, they might not let you see them, but mommy was very unusual. You did not need to call to be invited. You could stop by any time and be guaranteed that she'll cook for you, prepare a meal, entertain company. She made guests feel very at home. My mom was involved in a lot of community work. As a trained midwife, she delivered many babies born in St. John. Her name was equally as popular as her husband, Horatio, and her mother-in-law, Pet Cook. Even after she got married, they officially still called her Nurse Prescott. Mom had a gift for reaching young people. Her nieces, her nephews, and cousins all gravitated to her. Like her children, the two would share their concerts with her and receive wife counseling. She was forthright in her speech, and you always knew where you stood with her. Mom was a fashionista set in trends. Before it was ever done, her hair was always colored in red. I can't recall her seeing it black in my life. Her clothes were always elegant and stylish. Her love for fashion was extended to my sisters and me. And if we stand up, you'll see how elegant we are. <laughs> in addition to being a fashionista, Mommy was an exceptional dancer, you just heard. She loved calypso, she did ballroom dances, foxtrot, tango, cha-cha, waltz, you name it, she could do it. Mom knew how to really enjoy life. Despite her love for nursing, Mommy realized that working shift kept her away from her family. She realized that dad's busy life required a parent to be around more often. So she decided to find a more structured type of employment which would enable her to spend more time at home and nurture us and assist with our homework. She became a secretary and transferred her excellent work ethic to parliament. Mommy had her health challenges. She was a chronic asthmatic, but she would take inhalers and go off to work. Despite major attacks and dad's insistence that she resign and become a housewife, she gracefully declined as she loved her independence. In fact, when we became an entrepreneur as well, she took shares of successful business, a restaurant, and she also owned houses. Um, it was only through her love of family that she decided that she would retire early to take care of my firstborn baby, Shay. Mom was generous with her time and her money, willing to assist anyone in need and make that sacrifice. She was grateful to those who served her well and remembered them at Christmas. Mom would give the guest attendance and he promises gifts at Christmas Day thank you for their service to her. As mom got older, her health deteriorated. She spent her last days at Beulah Retired Retire Retreat, which I thank Ms. Linda Bowen, manager, and Ms. Cynthia Otley, registered nurse, and all the nurse and ancillary staff, and a lot of them are here today. The poem that you just heard by Brittany is a testimony to the love that they felt for my mom while she worked at the home. They call her Cookie, they call her Shishi, and they had a really good rapport with my mom. For my mom, Brittany was very close to her. My mom was her confidant, and I must say that she showered her with love. Mom was grounded in God. As a child, she attended Pentecostal Church. As an adult, she became a member of the Mount Tabor Moravian Church in St. John, and as you heard, a founding member of Faith Moravian in St. Philip which I thank Reverend Hamlin and members of faith who visited her religiously throughout the years to give her her communion. Mom was called a warrior at the retirement home. She fought all of her illnesses. She would bounce back each time. In November last year, the doctor said she could not make it and Reverend Hamlin gave her her last rites. But she bounced back, enjoyed Christmas, celebrated her birthday in January, and then on February 17th, she was tired. The warrior was tired and decided she needed to go home. Some of the persons whose lives she positively impacted share their thoughts on mom. I will share them with you now. My brother Paul, mom told him to learn to cook, wash and clean and press so the woman would actually hold him to ransom. <laughs> she was caring to her children and would take a week early to ensure that before we started the farm work, we had our breakfast. Stephen and Carl, she, they said she was a fun person to be around. You could have a full and frank discussion with her and no disclosure will go anyway. Andrea, she was affectionate and would always make you laugh. Auntie Phyllis, when she first met her, said she just fell in love with my mother's personality. She was funny and she would make a joke, have a most mischievous smile on her face and in her eyes. Ryan said she's a loving granny who goes out to help others, house open to all, family oriented. 
nieces Marcia, such a protective, had a listening ear, a lot of fun to be around, a great cook, and taught Kelvin how to cook her first meal lasagna and Rene fluffy rice. Mom loved to cook. Monica said she liked to laugh a lot, put others before herself. Friendly, she spoke her mind and would tell you off in a flash, but you knew she had your best interests at heart. A no-nonsense person, her home was open to all. She loved to cook and entertain. Her love extended to man's best friend's dogs, took special care of them. Hazel said she's a true friend, and was recited overseas, my mom looked after her mother, visiting her every Sunday. Auntie Norma said she was generous. She opened her house to her Uncle Don on the return from England to Barbados. Jalissa, her granddaughter, said, what I remembered most is the gooseberry syrup, the sour salt pops, getting a little batter when it baked, and now she paid me to visit my brother when studying in Trinidad. She said she encouraged us to make our beds every morning with a special tuck in in the corners. Antonia said, what I remember most is granny baking cake and my lick in the bowl. So now she had a problem there with two of them in that bowl, but anyway. It was obviously a race to get there first. He said that she encouraged her in the studies and following his dreams. Ramon said when he met her, she had an open heart and welcomed him. He liked how she was very jovial and how she welcomed him into the family. Um, she saw him as another son. Elise said she was thankful that she took in her and raised her for her after her mother died, and those were the best years of her youth. Tyreek said, Granny is a granny to all. Back to food again. He loved her drinks and her tea that she made as a child. The Lodge Posse. As I said, we were a house for young people to be there, whether in the neighborhood or those we went to school with. They were over by us almost every day. Summer was just the best summers ever, right? Laurie and Desi and Paul. <laughs> we had fun every day getting together over at my house. Siebert Strawn, Barbados athlete and Carifton medalist, has played an important role in his succession life in his development. Permanent secretary, Terry Bascom, who I know is here, says she made him feel welcome. When it's at our house, he felt as though she was his mother. And the QC posse, Flora said she was always welcoming and motherly and ensured she always felt comfortable. It was a home away from home when she slept by us. She said when she married, she married her husband, David, and they were building. Mama actually stopped by to see how the house was progressing and offered suggestions. And like everyone, she said she was jovial and loved to laugh. She said granny was fun to be around. I remember on evenings picking him up from school and it was always be a cold Kool-Aid waiting for him back to food again. For me, her support and encouragement and guidance cannot be underscored. She has contributed to who I am today in a positive way. My dreams were my dreams and not the other way around, not her dreams. She supported anything I wanted to do. As a child, I wanted to be a real hostess, uniform looked nice and stuff. And she said, okay, that's what you want to do. Then I loved geography, wanted to be a lancer. She said, okay, that's what you want to do. Then I did logic. She said, oh, yes, that's what you want to do. <laughs> it's for me throughout my different phases in life. We all agree having her as a mother, a grandmother, aunt, and a friend was the best thing that ever happened. I did an acronym of her name, S, spiritual, million dollar smile, as you can see. Her heart, big and brave and given. Entrepreneur, entertaining, and fun personality. Impressive in stature and personality. Now my mom's passport, she's shorter than my dad, but she's actually taller than him. So I'm not sure how to do that measurement in the immigration department. But um, she was taller than my dad, a strong big lady. Loving, a amazing mom, an asset to all who came in contact with her. I want to share your poem, Anon. Our mother kept a garden, a garden of the heart. She planted all good things that gave our life to start. She turned us to sunshine and encouraged us to dream, fostering and nurturing the seeds of self-esteem. And when the winds and rains came, she protected us enough, but not too much knew that we would need to stand up strong and get tough. Her constant example always taught us right from wrong, markers for our pathway to last our whole life long. My siblings and I are my mother's guardians. We are her legacy. May she rest in peace and rise in glory. On behalf of my family, I want to thank all of you for being here to support us. Everyone here has had a connection with her children or with her directly, and I'm glad you made it out today, and I'm glad the COVID restrictions actually allow us to have more of you to come. So I'm thankful for a lot, for lots of things, especially you being here in our time of need. I thank you. Please stand for the reception of the body.
with faith in Jesus Christ, we received the body of our sister Sheila for burial. Our sister was washed in holy baptism and anointed with the Holy Spirit. Let us therefore with confidence pray to God our Heavenly Father, the giver of life, that he will raise her to perfection in the company of the saints. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God of grace and glory, we remember before you this day, our sister Sheila. We thank you for giving her to us, family and friends, to know and love as a companion on our earthly pilgrimage. In your boundless compassion, console us who mourn. Give us faith to see in death the gate of eternal life, so that in quiet confidence we may continue our course on earth, until by your call we are reunited with those who have gone before, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The hymn 476. Let us pray. Almighty God, we remember before you today your servant, Sheila. And we pray that having opened to her the gates of larger life, you will receive her more and more into your joyful service. So that, if all who have served you in the past, she may share in the eternal victory of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please sit for the reading of the first Bible reading. Good evening, everyone. A reading from the Word of God written in Wisdom 3, 1 to 5 and 9. But the souls of the righteous are in the hand of God, and no torment will ever touch them. In the eyes of the foolish, they seem to have died, 
and their departure was thought to be a disaster, and they're going from us to be their destruction, but they are at peace. For though in the sight of others they were punished, their hope is full of immortality. Having been disciplined a little, they will receive great good because God tested them and found them worthy of himself. Those who trust in him will understand truth, and the faithful will abide with him in love, because grace and mercy are upon us holy ones, and he watches over his elect. The word of the Lord. Good afternoon, church. The scripture reading is taken from John 14, 1 to 6. Jesus said, Do not let your heart be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, I would have told you that I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and I will take you to. I will take you myself, so that where I am, they may be also. And you know the way to the place where I'm going, Thomas said to him. Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Thanks be to God. May God add his richest blessings to his word. Sermon 400 and 
Greetings, as I take time out to recognize and uh, say thanks for their presence and support to Her Excellency, the Most Honorable Dame Sandra Prunella Mason, President of Barbados, the Honorable Sir Patterson Cheltenham, Chief Justice of Barbados, former Chief Justice Sir Marston Gibson, Sir Keith Hunt, Sir Trevor Carmichael, Senator Dr. Christopher Maynard, Justices of Appeal, Madam Justice Margaret Reefer, Justices of the High Court, Justice Randall Worrell, Madam Justice. O thou, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. This evening, I would wish you to give attention for a while to the theme, What is Life? John 
chapter 14, verse 6, which was shared for us earlier, said, says, Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. The way, the truth, and the life. I do believe that many of us, most of us, maybe even all of us, have discovered how important road signs are, for they point to the way. And uh, like me, some of you may have had the experience of missing a road sign. It used to be there up to the last time I passed, but when I needed it, it was no longer there. And so I did a whole loop and circle until I caught myself. We all know as well the significance of the truth. And that comes home to us very forcibly on April 1st, when the made up stories, far from the truth, come our way and often lead us down a garden path. More critical, my friends, I posit, is life. And we are brought into focus with this in a particular way at a time like this, when we are thinking of the passing, the death of a loved one. When we are at a funeral, we are forced to think of life. And so, my friends, I urge us, I invite us to reflect on life this evening. Firstly, I ask you to consider the definition of life. Now, that may depend on who you are. To the biologist, life will be described in terms of breath, blood, tissue, organs, etc. And even at creation, we hear of the breath of life. To the sociologists, life is seen in terms of social interaction within the family structure, the learning system, community experience, food, shelter, clothing. And even in Jesus' case, he sought to provide food for the hungry in feeding them whilst they were with him. To the psychologist, the definition of life would be in terms of emotional well-being, love, security, knowledge, need satisfaction. And so we hear of the hierarchy of needs. My friends, I draw attention to the Christian perspective of the definition for life. And from the Christian perspective, we see life in terms of the divine intervention that takes place, relations with the supreme being, our God. And as Jesus would have said to those around him, life being more than meat and raiment, Life consisting not in material things. Life being spiritual in nature. And so, depending on who you are and where you stand and the perspective from which you look, life may have different definition. I invite you then to consider the quality of life. To note that quality of life is not how much food 
or money one may have, nor the type of house or car, not where you live, work, or go to school. Indeed, we see quality of life as beyond these things and reaching to emotional and spiritual satisfaction. For as Jesus said, he has come that we might have life and have it more abundantly. Therefore, my friends, quality of life is to be found in Jesus Christ. And that not simply, not only in the sweet by and by, not only later, but he wants us to have life in its abundance here and now. Hence, in one of my favorite verses of scripture, he said, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all other things, all these things shall be added unto you. He understands that you need to experience life in its fullness. Note that you do not have ultimate control over life. And so we are reminded of this in scripture. Neither can you gain ultimate control of life. Because even when we see the rich man and his crops, the rich man in scripture who decided he had so much that he would build bigger barns and store up, we hear that he was called away from it all. Rather, we are called to share and to live. And as we do so, to secure better life for all. I want you to take your mind, and I dare say you don't have to try too hard to imagine too much because of where we are. But I want you to take your mind to a cemetery and a look at the many tombstones will often produce, will often show, besides name, two dates with a dash between. I want to suggest to you, my friends, that even more important than the first date, which is the date of birth or the date of sunrise, as we sometimes call it, or the second date, the date of death or departure or passing or sunset, even more important than those, my friends, is the little punctuation mark that comes between the two dates. The dash. For my friends, that dash really represents life, your life. You are born at the first date. The dash is your journey through life to the closing date. The question is, what do you make of that dash? How significant is that dash in your experience? I posit that that dash says a lot about quality of life as it has come your way and as you have lived it. And so that takes us to the abundance of life. That Life is more than what we often experience because we do not reach out where we ought to. That it goes even beyond 
Jesus saying, I'm come that you may have life. He says to have it more abundantly. In his discussion with Martha, he declared that he is the resurrection and the life. The wise man in the book of Proverbs says, Whosoever finds me, meaning God, finds life. And in 1 John, we are reminded that who has the Son has life, for this life is in the Son. By extension, who does not have the Son does not have life. So both the Deuteronomist and the prophet Jeremiah say to their people, I set before you life and death with the suggestion that you choose life. which is offered so freely to us. For in the verse of scripture, which I believe we have all known from our earliest days, we are reminded that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have what? Eternal life. Therefore, my friends, it behoves us not to store up tre treasure on earth, but to lay up treasure in heaven, to experience and enjoy this eternal life, this abundance of life, so that we make way for the eternal life, so that we prepare for our heavenly home, for our life on earth determines the life beyond. I say to you that Jesus Christ is the life, as he declared in John 14, and therefore would call on you to find him and live now and in eternity. We are here today celebrating the life of Sister Sheila Cook. She has lived her life. She has satisfied her dash. She has fulfilled the very definitions of life. She has experienced the quality of life. She has afforded abundance of life. Hence, at this time, there is continuing glory in that abundant life for her. for the commitment, the promise of our Lord is for an eternity in glory with him to those who live for him and walk with him on earth. I want, my friends, to share with you some thoughts from Sai Baba on what is life. And we are told life is a challenge. Meet it. Life is a gift. Accept it. Life is an adventure. Dare it. Life is a duty. Perform it. Life is a mystery. Unfold it. Life is an opportunity. 
take it. Life is a struggle. Fight it. Life is a goal. Achieve it. Life is a puzzle. Solve it. Above all, my friends, I share with you the thought that life is a journey and you should seek to complete it. Sister Sheila has completed her journey. Her journey of life. What of you? What about you? Will you fulfill your journey? Will you make your dash count? Will you seek Jesus Christ to live an abundant life both here and in eternity? Remember, he said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. He, my friends, he is the means for this life. The means for life is Jesus Christ. And so I challenge you to choose him now and live. Remember, the funeral service, the service of thanksgiving for the life of the departed is really about and for the living. You are the only ones who can make any difference, who can do anything any differently now, who can turn anything around or have anything turned around for yourself. And so I say to you, the question is, what is life? My friends, I present to you Jesus Christ, the life. He is life. And he can make a difference no matter what your definition, no matter what your quality of life, he will ensure that there is abundance of life here and in the hereafter. And so, my friends, I offer to you Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Precious Lord, as we reflect today on life, especially since we are in the midst of death, we pray that we may truly reflect on our own lives and recognize that it is represented by the dash between our date of arrival on earth and our date of departure from earth. We are currently within the realm and sphere of the dash. Help us, O oh Lord, so to make that dash meaningful, to make it count by walking it with you, by giving it to you, by inviting Christ Jesus into our experience so that we may experience we may find that abundant life whilst we walk this earth with him and we may anticipate look forward to that glorious life with him in eternity there to meet with sister Sheila 
and other loved ones who have gone on before. Help us then to understand that you, Jesus Christ, truly are the means of life and to claim that means for our own glory and our own time of fellowship and reunion with the Father. So, guide us as we further reflect and cause us to respond, claiming Christ Jesus as Savior and Lord to make life now full of meaning, filled with hope, and to give us that blessed hope of eternal life in glory with you. Amen. Let us stand and with confidence and hope confess the faith into which we were baptized in the words of the Apostles' Creed as printed on page 6 of the booklet. I believe in God, Father Almighty,
please remain standing for the prayers. After the bidding, Lord, in your mercy, your response shall be, hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. We pray for those who mourn. We commemorate the departing. Let us pray with confidence to our Father, who raised our Lord Jesus from the dead for the salvation of all. Grant, Lord, that your servant may know the fullness of life which you have promised to those who love you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Be close to those who mourn. Increase their faith in your undying love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. May we be strengthened in our faith. Live the rest of our lives in fellowship with your Son and be ready when you call us to the fullness of life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Show your mercy to the dying. Strengthen them with hope and fill them with peace and joy of your presence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend all people to your unfailing love, that in them your will may be fulfilled, and we rejoice at the faithful witness of your saints in every age, praying that we share with them in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Lord Jesus Christ, we commend to you our sister Sheila, who was reborn by water and the spirit in holy baptism. Grant that her death may recall to us your victory over death and be an occasion for us to renew our trust in your Father's love. Give us, we pray, the faith to follow where you have led the way and where you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit to the ages of ages. Amen. Let me take this opportunity on behalf of the parish family here at St. John to extend sincere condolences to the Cook family and assure you of our prayerful support in this your time of bereavement. Please remain standing for the commendation. ordained when you created me saying you're dust and to dust you shall return all of us go down to the dust yet even of the grave we make our song alleluia 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 give rest O christ to your servant with your saints where sorrow and pain are no more neither sighing but life everlasting let us commend our sister sheila to the mercy of god our maker and redeemer Deliver your servant, Sheila, O Sovereign Lord Christ, from all evil, and set her free from every bond, that she may rest with all your saints in the eternal habitation, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant, Sheila. I acknowledge we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive her into the arms of your mercy, in the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen.
can scan. Can it be that the regard is songs of
Father gives to me will come to me. I will never turn away anyone who believes in me. He who ra raised Jesus Christ from the dead will also give new life to our mortal bodies through his indwelling spirit. My heart, therefore, is glad and my spirit rejoices. My body also shall rest in hope. You will show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy, and in your right hand are pleasures forevermore. I heard a voice from heaven saying, Write this. Happy are the dead who die in the faith of Christ. Henceforth, says the Spirit, they may rest from their labors, for they take with them the records of their deeds. Man born of a woman, has but a short time to live. Like a flower, he blossoms and then withers. Like a shadow, he flees and never stays. In the midst of life, we are in death. To whom can we turn for help? But to you, Lord, who are, just, who are justly angered by our sins. Lord God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, holy and most merciful Savior, Deliver us from the bitter pains of eternal death. You know the secrets of our hearts. In your mercy, hear our prayer. Forgive us our sins. And at our last hour, let us not fall away. In sure and certain hope of resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ, we commend to Almighty God our sister Sheila, and we commit our body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust and we beseech your infinite goodness to give us grace to live in your dear love and to die in your favor that when your well beloved son shall come again in judgment both this our sister Sheila and we ourselves may be found acceptable in your sight grant this for the sake of your son Jesus Christ our Lord Amen, Amen. Almighty God with whom still live the spirits of those who die in the Lord, and with whom the souls of the faithful are in joy and felicity, we give you heartfelt thanks for the good examples of all your servants who have been finished their course in faith, now find rest and refreshment. May we, with all who have died in the true faith of your holy name, have perfect fulfillment and bless in your eternal and everlasting glory, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the resurrection and the life, raise us, we humbly pray, from the death of sin to the life of righteousness, that when we depart this life, we may rest in him, and at the resurrection, receive that blessing which your well-beloved Son shall then pronounce. Come, you blessed of my Father, Receive the kingdom prepared for you from the beginning of the world. Grant this, O merciful Father, through Jesus Christ, our mediator and redeemer. Amen. Amen. Grant, O Lord, to all who are bereaved the spirit of faith and courage, that they may have strength to meet the days to come with steadfastness and patience, not soaring as those without hope, but in thankful remembrance of your great goodness and in the joyful expectation of eternal life with those they love. And this we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Remember, O Lord, this your servant who has gone before us with the sign of faith and now rests in the sleep of peace. According to your promises, Grant to her and to all who rest in Christ refreshment, light, and peace through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen.
be your sin the double cure. Cleanse me from my guilt and poor. Not the labors of my hand can fulfill thy Lord's demands. Could my zeal nor race my show, could my tears forever flow, all for sin could not atone. Thou a safe and all alone. Nothing in my hand I bring, simply to thy cross I cling. Make it come to be for rest, helpless love to be for grace. All my to the fountain fly, watch me sing before I die. While I draw this pleading breath, when my eye is closed at death, when I soar through tracks unknown, see the on thy judgment throne. Rock of ages left for me. Let me hide myself in thee. to the dust and say, go back, O child of earth. For a thousand years in your sight are like yesterday when it is past, and like a watch in the night. You sweep us away like a dream. We fade away suddenly like the grass. In the morning it is green and flourishes. In the evening, it is dried up and withered. For we consume away in your displeasure. We are afraid because of your wrathful indignation. 
or iniquities you have set before you and our secret sins in the light of your countenance. When you are angry, all our days are gone. We bring our years to an end like a sigh. The span of life is 70 years, perhaps in strength, even 80. Yet the sum of them is but labor and sorrow, for they pass away quickly and we are gone. Who regards the power of your wrath? Who rightly fears your indignation? So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. Return, O Lord. How long will you tarry? Be gracious to your servants. Satisfy us by your loving kindness in the morning. So shall we rejoice and be glad all the days of our life. Make us glad by the measure of the days that you afflicted us and the years in which we suffered adversity. Show your servants your works and your splendor to their children. May the graciousness of the Lord our God be upon us. Prosper the work of our hands. Prosper our handiwork. When the roll is called up yonder. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more, and the morning breaks eternal bright and day, when the save on earth shall gather over on the other shore, and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the, when the roll is called up yonder, Bright and cloudless morning when the dead in Christ shall rise And the glory of his resurrection share Then his chosen ones shall gather till they won't be on the sky And the road is called up yonder, I'll be there When the, when the road is called up yonder When the road is called up yonder When the road is called up yonder Yonder I'll be there. Let us and set on the dawn to set in sun. Let the sound of all his wondrous love and care. And when all of life is over and our work on earth is done, and the roll is called up yonder I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, when the roll is called up yonder. I love the Lord because he has heard the, the voice, voice of my supplication. Because he has inclined his ear to me whenever I call upon him. The cars of death entangle me. The grip of the grave took hold of me. I came to sorrow and grief. Then I call upon the name of the Lord. O oh Lord, I pray you, save my life. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Our God is full of compassion. The Lord watches over the innocent. I was brought very low and he helped me. Turn again to your rest, O oh my soul, for the Lord has treated you well. For you have rescued my life from death, my eyes from tears, and my feet from stumbling. 
I will walk in the presence of the Lord in the land of the living. I believe, even when I said I have been brought very low, in my distress I said no one can be trusted. How shall I repay the Lord for all the good things he has done for me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his servants. O oh Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant and the child of your handmaid. You have freed me from my bonds. I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. In the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem. Hallelujah. The final hymn, 173, When We All Get to Heaven. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing his mercies and his grace. In the mansions bright and blessed, shall I come to appear before the presence of God? My tears have been my food day and night. While all day long they say to me, where now is your God? 
I pour out my soul when I sing on these things. How I went with the multitude and led them into the house of God. With the voice of praise and thanksgiving. Among those who keep holy day. Why are you so full of heaviness, O my soul? And why are you so disquieted within me? My soul is heavy within me. Therefore, I will remember you from the land of Jordan and from the peak of Mizza among the heights of Hermon. One deep calls to another in the noise of your cataracts. All your rapids and floods have gone over me. The Lord grants his loving kindness in the daytime. In the night season, his song is with me, a prayer to the God of my life. I will say to the God of my strength, why have you forgotten me? And why do I go so heavily while the enemy oppresseth me? While my bodies, my bones are being broken, my enemies mock me to my face. All day long they mock me and say to me, Where now is your God? Why are you so full of heaviness, O oh my soul? And why are you so disquieted within me? Put your trust in God, for I will yet give thanks to him who is the help of my countenance and my God. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it's now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen.
and to present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. May her soul and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the tender mercy of God, rest in peace. Thank you very much. Thank then. you very much for our Okay. Good voice. I thank you.